Well, here we go with lesson 25, our second part of section 8.1, the law of signs. And this will wrap up the law of signs. And this is my son standing way too close to the camera. So, quick reminder, um, triangles in this section are oblique. That means they're non-right triangle. And there's your law of signs, which is on the formula sheet, but it's really hard not to memorize it. We'll be using law of signs in these application problems. Here's our first problem, finding the height of an airplane. An aircraft is spotted by two observers who are 1,000 feet apart. As the airplane passes between them and over the line joining them, observer A sights a 40 degree angle of elevation and observer B sights a 35 degree angle of elevation. How high is the airplane? The important thing here is that they are both looking up and they are facing each other. So the plane is between them and it's directly over the line that joins the two. I, I know the odds of this happening are very slim, but for the purposes of the problem, we, we do this anyway. Uh, so there's your triangle. There's your two-dimensional triangle right there. So there's your basic setup. Uh, angle of elevation from point A is 40 degrees. Angle of elevation from point B is 35 degrees. There's 1,000 feet between them. Drop the altitude straight down from the aircraft. couple things here. This is not an isosceles triangle. Therefore, you do not divide the that segment A, B in half and you do not divide the angle up there at the aircraft in half either. Uh, first thing is you probably want to get that angle up there at the aircraft, uh, so that's a 105 degree angle. You could go ahead and, and get the individual pieces there uh, for those two angles, but that is not going to help us any because we don't know the individual sides. We just know that whole side across from 105 degrees is 1,000 feet, and that is going to be our law of sines. That's what we're going to use to set up the law of sines equations. So we're here to find H. Uh, what we have to find is either A or B first. Now you can find A or B. It won't make any difference. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and find A, but we just as easily could have found B. And so I set up the sine of 105 degrees over 1,000 is equal to the sine of 40 degrees over A. I cross multiply and divide, and I get A to be about 665.5 feet. So now that I have A, I looked at that right triangle there on the right. Had I found B, I would have looked toward the right triangle on the left. I'll show you in my next slide. So there's a right triangle there on the right-hand side. The hypotenuse is 665.5. I, I leave all in my calculator. So the sine of 35 is opposite over hypotenuse, H over 665.5. So sine 35 equals H over 665.4627. And then I multiply both sides by the hypotenuse and I get H to be 381.7. Now had I found B in part one, I would have used the right triangle on the left side. I, I still get the same value for H. B would have been smaller than 665, but it, it, it's no big deal. So we found our answer. So the height of the airplane is 381.7 feet uh, above the ground. Uh, again, uh, we, you're either going to find A or B uh, in either way. You want. And this, this idea that you're going to end up using right triangle trigonometry right after using law of sines um, happens quite often in these application problems. So let's look at a ski lift problem. The angle of elevation of a ski lift to the top of a mountain is 25 degrees. From a point 1,000 feet behind the lift and along the same line as the base of the mountain to the lift, the angle of elevation at the top of the mountain is 15 degrees. What's the, height, what's the length of the ski lift and what's the height of the mountain? And that part B is a very similar to what we did in Chapter 6 where we used two tangent functions. We're going to see a little easier way to do that type of problem now with law of sines at our disposal. And the length of the ski lift, that's a piece that we're going to need in order to do part B, so that's usually why we ask part A. So here's the basic drawing. You see the ski lift there with the 25 degree angle of elevation. You back up 1,000 feet to point C. There's your 15 degree angle of elevation. And you see there's the mountain. Well, it's not much of a mountain, but that represents the altitude of the mountain. Uh, the ski lift there is going along the slope of the mountain. I guess I could have done a more accurate drawing and you know used a, used a better better pencil, I guess. But this is the basic setup, so let's go through here. That angle A, that angle there A is going to be the important one. So the first thing you want to do is find that angle on the other side of 25 degrees. Um, and so two angles that make up a straight line have to be supplementary. You learn that from your geometry days. So 180 minus 25 is 155. If you find that angle, normally these problems just fall right into place because 155 plus 15 uh, is 170. 
subtract that from 180 and notice up there in the upper right we now know that angle is 10 degrees and the key to that is that's across from a thousand ah law of sines so the sine of 15 degrees over the ski lift is equal to the sine of 10 degrees over a thousand you cross multiply you divide and the ski lift is 1490.5 feet uh, you would report it as 1,490.5, but we're going to end up using that length, that ski lift, in the second calculation in order to find the height of the mountain. And you want to use the ski lift in all of it with all of its decimals. So don't don't round off when you go to the second part. Leave that 1,490.4795 in your calculator. So we got the ski lift figured out. So let's find the height of the mountain. Well, notice there's a right triangle there on the right side. And this is similar to from the previous problem. We did law of sines to find part A. Now we're going to use right triangle trigonometry to find part B. So the mountain, the height of the mountain, is across from 25 degrees. The ski lift is the hypotenuse of that right triangle. So the sine of 25 is opposite over hypotenuse, mountain over 1490.4795. Um, multiply both sides by the hypotenuse, and the mountain is 630 feet. And we did it again. We started with law of sines, and then we finish with right triangle trigonometry. So the height of the mountain is 630 feet, and this all kind of makes sense there. Um, we, you could find some more information here, but normally this is what we do. We ask for the height of the ski, the length of the ski uh, lift, and we ask for the height of the mountain. But remember back in chapter 6, if we'd asked for the height of the mountain back then, we would have had to put an X in there between the, you know, that piece there between the end of the thousand and all the way to the right there. We'd have set up two uh, tangent functions and we would have two equations to unknowns this is a lot easier hopefully you see it's a lot easier all right so now you got to use your imagination uh, surveyor notes the direction from a to b is north 78 east the direction from a to c is north 21 degrees east so that means a is going to be at the origin where the x and y where the north south and the east west lines intersect we give you the distance from a to b and the distance from b to c but the important thing is to get the sides laid out with those angles so we're going to go from north to east from A to B and north to east for A to C. So let's get this labeled. Well, let's get this drawn and then labeled. So you notice from A to B is north 78 east and from A to C is north 21 east. We then put the distance from A to B to 3, 345 meters and the distance from B to C to be 543 meters. And so we have the basic drawing here, and it doesn't have to be drawn to scale, and you're more than welcome to do that if you want to pull out a compass and a rule and a protractor. But make it kind of reasonable. Well, that is pretty much looks like 78 degrees, and the 21 degrees kind of looks like 21 degrees. All right, so we're going to need that angle across from 543 to start with. So not the toughest calculation in the world. 78 degrees minus 21 degrees is 57 degrees. So 57 is across from 543. Now, we want the side, that AC, which is across from angle B. We can't get angle B, so we're going to have to find angle C first. Then we'll find angle B. So the sine of 57 degrees over 543 is the sine of gamma over 345. Cross, multiply, divide. Take inverse sine. Now you get two angles. Remember I told you this before, that when you do inverse sine, you always get two angles, the one your calculator tells you and the obtuse one. So 32.2 is what your calculator tells you, but right away subtract that from 180. 147.8 also has a sign of 0.5329. However, you can't put 147.8 into this triangle because if you add that to 57, it's too big. It's, there's not enough room for angle beta. We're already over 180 degrees. So there is one and only one triangle. And I'll tell you, on these application problems, there will only be one triangle. So 32.2 degrees is our angle. Now with that, we have two angles. Ah, uh, we know how to find the third angle. So I add the two angles together, subtract from 180, and the angle I really want is beta, because it's across from the side that I want, AC. So beta is 90.8 degrees. And so I'm going to set up the law of sines again, using the 57 degrees and the 543, and I'm going to use that angle beta to find side AC. So the sine of 57 degrees over 543 is a sine of 90.8 degrees over AC. And again, I left that all in my calculator. I'm not going to put 90.8 in there. It was, it was a lot of decimals involved there. And I cross multiply and divide, and I get AC to be 647.4. And it better be the longest, largest side because it's across from the largest angle. So you know, in the next slide, I'm just going to write it all out. I'm going to say, does this make sense? Now I stare at it, and you know it does make sense. The largest 
uh, side is across from the largest angle and the smallest side is across from the smallest angle. This triangle generally makes sense. Notice we use the same setup two times in a row. Sine of 57 degrees over 543. You know, once I have one of those givens, I tend to stay with that one. I don't use calculated values in the next calculation, even though I could if I left it on my calculator, but I, I normally don't. So using the law of sines twice, we knocked it out. And so now I'm going to have a couple um, problems here that normally give people headaches on the homework. This is one of them. A helicopter hovers at an altitude of 1,000 feet above the mountain peak at an altitude of 5,240 feet as shown in the figure. A second taller peak is viewed from the, both the mountaintop and the helicopter. From the helicopter, the angle of depression, and notice they have that labeled properly, uh, is 43 degrees. And from the mountaintop, that's the lower mountaintop, the angle of elevation is A. That angle A is 18 degrees. So we want to find the distance from peak to peak, and we also want to find the altitude of the of the higher peak. And so I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to give you some ideas here. I'm not going to solve this out. I'm just going to give you some ideas on how you're going to do yours. So the first thing you have to do is find y. That's the distance between the two peaks. The second thing you have to do is find x, which is actually the altitude distance difference between the two peaks. Well, you have all the angles you need. You've got that angle 43 degrees up top. That'll tell you the, you could subtract that from 90 and get the angle inside that triangle up near the helicopter. You've got angle uh, A there, which is what, 18 degrees. And you could subtract that from 90 and get the angle inside that triangle. And if you have two angles inside of a triangle, you can find the third one, and then you can set up law signs to find y. Now, x, once you know, look at that. We did law of signs, and now we're going to do right triangle trigonometry. So once you have y, and you have angle A, you can find X because right triangle trigonometry. Now that's the difference between the altitudes of the upper peak and the lower peak. And I'll leave it to you to figure out the altitude of the higher peak. So I'm just giving you some ideas on how to solve these. I'm not going to actually solve them out for you because I want you to work at this. Oh, a cathedral is located on a hill as shown in the figure. When the top of the spiral is viewed from the base of the hill, the angle of elevation is 48 degrees. When it's viewed from a distance of, of A feet, from the base of the hill, the angle of elevation is 41 degrees. The hill rises at an angle of 32 degrees, approximately the height of the cathedral, if A is 235, oh, I think it's meters or something like that. There's a lot going on here. But I want to show you basically what we're looking at here is that you've got three triangles, two oblique triangles and one right triangle. And I want you to see what you got here. And again, I'm not going to solve this all out for you. But really, this is kind of the ski lift problem in that you have to find y first before you can find x. They only want the height of the cathedral. They don't want the whole distance, the whole height of the mountain, if you wanted to relate it to a previous problem. They only want the height of the cathedral. So you're going to find y. And again, the most important piece of this is that angle to the right of 41 degrees inside that small triangle on the left. And again, there are three triangles here. I see it. Two oblique and one right triangle. If you can find that angle next to 41 degrees, you'd have two angles. You could subtract from 180. There's some. You could have the angle across from, in this case, 235. If I have that, I can find y. And if I have y, well, then I can find x. But you're going to have to look at that right triangle. That 32 degrees in there is, is, is the green part of that right triangle. And then you're going to need the piece above that that's, that's in that second or that middle oblique triangle. With that 32 degrees, you could find the angle at the top of the right triangle. You could then find the angle there uh, inside that, that second oblique triangle. You can find all the angles. And once you have that, you can do law of sines and you can solve this. But don't give up. Spend some time on it and see if you can knock it out on your own. Well, that takes us to the end of another exciting lesson. Get to work on the homework.